Hey guys, welcome back to another market update and forecast video. I hope you guys are staying safe, resilient, patient and persistent while we wait for this cycle to run its course. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I teach about the trucking industry with a heavy focus on the spot market as well as freight market analysis. So if this is a topic that interests you, feel free to subscribe down below. Well, the market, I'll tell you that this week I have been focusing solely on flatbeds because it was kind of a Murphy's Law week, but I'll tell you about that towards the end of the video. Let's go ahead and look at what happened last week and what we can expect for next week in terms of the freight market. Ready? Let's go. Now, before we begin, a quick announcement. I know I said I do the lives every second Sunday and I was supposed to do a live this Sunday, but of course, as usual, I forgot to check the calendar. And this Sunday happens to be Easter, so I am postponing that live to next Sunday. Anyway, let's get into the numbers. All right, we'll start with the big picture. And again, as a reminder, these will be attached down below. So we're gonna start by looking at the outbound tender volume index versus the outbound tender rejection index. Since I get comments on these videos all the time, I will repeat. Volumes refer to how much freight there is in the market. How many loads are there? What is the demand like from shippers? Tender rejections, which is the white line, this refers to how many contract loads are getting pushed into the spot market because contract carriers are rejecting them. Usually tender rejections, the higher they are, the higher the rates in the spot market. So again, the blue line right here is showing us volumes and this chart is year to date, so from the beginning of the year. And we can see that volumes, they are continuing to remain stable. Obviously there are some peaks and valleys there, but in general, they're continuing to remain stable. Now, if we look at the white line, the tender rejection, yes, I thought that the bottom was around February 15th right here. I was wrong. Look at where we are right now. It did go up a little bit and now is going down again. Currently the tender rejection rates, are 3.07%, meaning that only 3.07% of contract freight is ending up on the spot market, therefore adding to that very low rates problem. Now, what about equipment specific tender rejections? And for this, we're going to look at how much they changed since last week. Blue is flatbed, uh, green, the green line right here, this is dry van, and the orange one is reefer. So we can see that from last week, the blue line, which is flat, but those tender rejections increased. They actually increased by 12.3% since last week, which is great. Now, in terms of dry vans, the green line, the tender rejections fell by 4.6% reefer tender rejections fell by 13.3%. So yeah, not, not great. Now, if we look at the same chart, but over a five year period, what we're gonna see, and I thought this was important to show you guys, again, blue is the flatbed rejections, and this is over five years, orange is reefers, and green is dry vans. Reefers, you can't see the number here, but reefers are actually at the lowest point in the last five years. Let's see if it, yeah, there we go. Look at that, lowest point in the last five years, reefer tender rejections. Dry van tender rejections are just slightly above April of 2020. Flatbed rejections are just coming off of their peak in 2022. They're all over the place. So if anyone thinks that this market is normal, it is not normal. Now on to the national truckload index for line haul only, meaning that this does not take into consideration that fuel surcharge. And this is taken from dry vans. Currently it's at $1.64 per mile, right? This is a drop from last week as well. Last week it was $1.65 per mile. And what this shows us is that Rates are horrible. This is the operating cost of some carriers. For many carriers, this is below operating costs. So we are going to see capacity start leaving the market. Okay, now on to some specifics and we'll start with flatbeds. As a reminder, I do not have such specific data for flatbeds as I do for dry vans and reefers, but I do have a subscription to TruckStop where I get this data. So this is showing us how many inbound trucks there are going into a state in this case. 
versus outbound loads. So it shows us basically capacity. So starting with the Western states, all the ones with the star here and the ones that are highlighted in red, this is where there are more loads in the market than there are trucks going into that market. So there is no overcapacity. So in the Western states, California, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington, they all have more loads than trucks going in. Again, I do not see this translating that much into rates. Um, except for the fact that the rates are good if you're going from West Coast to West Coast, but getting out of the West Coast, it pays like crap. Now, if we look at the plain states, this is the worst place to be for flatbeds. These are the states in the plain states and South Dakota is the only one barely that has more loads picking up than trucks actually going into that market. Everything else there, are too few loads, too many trucks. So this is a place to stay away from. Northeastern states, Connecticut, Delaware, Maryland, and Pennsylvania. These are the four places in the Northeast where there are more loads than trucks going in. Now, the best place to be, from my experience as well, is the Southern states, of course. Look, it's almost all starred, except for Tennessee, North Carolina, and Florida. And you can see by the amount of loads picking up versus the number of loads dropping off, how many trucks are going into the market, that there is a very big spread, right? So Southern states, good place to be. Midwestern states, unlike for dry vans and reefers, usually not the best place to be, but there are some areas of opportunity in Illinois, Minnesota, and West Virginia. I think this is the first time I actually do feel like a weather lady. So basically sunshine in Illinois, Minnesota, and West Virginia, rain everywhere else. <laughs> Anyway, enough horsing around. We're discussing serious things here. Now let's look at dry van specifics, starting with volume. Now, as a reminder, the height of an area shows us the general volume. The higher it is, the more loads are coming out of that area generally. The color shows us whether volumes increased or decreased from last week. Red is a decrease blue is an increase. So for the most part, the map is either gray, which means there was no change, or red with some blue spots. I mean, yeah, there are some blue spots, but mostly volumes are dropping for dry vans. The most significant increases in volumes were really in the Phoenix, Arizona area. And I believe this is the Grand Junction, Colorado area. But if you look at this, it's flat, which means there's not much volume to begin with. There are some places in the Midwest as well and the East Coast where volumes increase, but for the most part, we can see that volumes are still dropping for dry vans. Now let's take a look at this same map, but looking at tender rejections for dry vans. And what we can see, again, red means there was a decrease in tender rejections, blue means an increase, elevation shows the general picture. So what we can see here is that there's a ton of red um, in the Midwest and in the South as well, in Florida and Jacksonville, Michigan, basically West Coast, <laughs> West Coast either didn't change or dropped, um, East Coast, same thing. Yeah, tender rejections have decreased in some areas. There are some areas where there was an increase, especially Ohio, West Virginia, Indiana, Kentucky. So there are places where the rejections also increased, but where do you need to go if you have a dry van? Well, you need to go to a place where the volumes are high because you need to have loads to choose from and where the tender rejections are high so that the rates are better. So I have this map as always, I only label the places where the rejection is over 10%. And I have to tell you, it does look better than it did last week. Last week, there were only three decent market areas. This week, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it doubled, <laughs> that's good. So the best areas from what I can see is the Green Bay, Wisconsin area. The rejection is decent, the volume is decent. Sioux Falls, South Dakota, also decent. And then we have Evansville and the Louisville market where the volume is decent and the rejection is decent. Now, in terms of a place like North Platte, or Huntington. Yeah, the rejection is there, but the volume is very low. But in general, I would say Midwest is still the best place to be if you have a dry van. Now, what about the head haul index for dry vans? Well, this shows us the difference between outbound loads versus inbound trucks. Basically, it shows us capacity. 
If it's red, it means there are more trucks going into that market than there are loads going out. So that means overcapacity, bad rates, no negotiation potential. Blue is the opposite. And for the most part, we can see that the map is pretty red with some blue spots, but in reality, it didn't even change much since last week. Basically, we can see that there is significant overcapacity of dry vans compared to loads. There are some areas like Pennsylvania, Ohio, there is the Georgia area, some Midwestern states where there are more outbound loads than inbound trucks, but then we also have to consider deadhead. A lot of these guys and gals are delivering to a place like as I said before, you deliver to Pittsburgh, it gets electronically recorded because of the electronic rate confirmations, but then you decide to deadhead from here to somewhere, I don't know, Akron or Cleveland, Ohio to get the next load. And all of a sudden here there is overcapacity. So I hope that makes sense, but in general, overcapacity for dry vans. So now reefer volumes, right? Same map, different equipment type. So again, as a reminder, height is the general volume, how many loads come out of that area. And then the color signals the change. Red means decrease in volume, blue means an increase in volume. And in general, the map is gray, which means there was no significant change for reefer volumes. There are some blue spots, there are some red spots, but what I want to focus your attention on and something that is concerning to me is look at Calif Central California, no change. Central California is a market where the produce is coming out of, right? Arizona, no change. A lot of produce loads come out of Nogales. Houston area, Dallas area, no change. Even Florida, no change, which means that produce season has yet to materialize for reefers because we're not seeing an increase in volumes in the markets that are known for produce. Now, what about tender? rejections. Well, this map is more interesting. I see a lot of blue, which makes me really, really happy. Blue means an increase in tender rejections, right? So we can see that the Midwest is, it's struggling. The tender rejections are going down there. We can see that in the Pendleton, Oregon market, in the Southeast, Virginia, some Midwestern states and Houston, tender rejections increased. So where do you need to be if you have a reefer? Again, just like with the dry van, I only labeled those areas where the tender rejection is over 10%. So the markets that stand out to me is the Pendleton, Oregon market, 11% rejection, 16% volume. Nothing amazing, obviously, but we're speaking relatively. Um, Omaha, Nebraska area is good. Rejection and volume is decent. Dimwan, Dimwan, I, I don't know how to pronounce it, Iowa. It's decent. Um, we can see a place like Bismarck, North Dakota. I'll remind you guys, the rejection is insane, but the volume is so low that sonar doesn't even have that index there. So yeah, great place to get a really good paying load, but there's just gonna be one of them. Um, then we have the Fargo, uh, North Dakota area. Great place, the volume is decent. The rejection is really high. And then we had Houston, which we haven't seen before. The volume is pretty low, but at least there is a good amount of tender rejections relatively. So yeah, again, this will be attached down below so you can look at it closer. Let's take a look at the head haul index for reefers. Obviously not as dire as for dry vans. It's not as red. There's actually some blue uh, market areas. And something that I realized right away, again, blue means there are more outbound loads than inbound trucks, meaning that there is more demand than supply, right? Red is the opposite. I have realized, and it made me laugh, that it looks like finally carriers realize that California is not the place to go because obviously there are more outbound loads than inbound trucks. People don't wanna go there. Same thing for Florida, especially the Tampa area. Uh, Fort Worth as well, I was pretty surprised. Fort Worth also has more loads than there are trucks. The Eastern states, yeah, there is overcapacity there. Now on to trucks in the market. And just as a reminder, again, this tells us nothing about capacity. It tells us everything about driver and carrier behavior. Red means that trucks have left that market area over the past week. Blue means that trucks entered that market area over the past week. 
And as I said before, we saw it with reefers. It looks like carriers are leaving California, carriers are leaving Florida and some of the southeastern states. And a lot of them are going to the south. They're going to some Midwestern states. But yeah, basically, it looks like people are giving up on California and Florida and New York, clearly. West Virginia and Ohio also saw a decrease in trucks, which might explain why the tender rejections have increased there. Now, what about diesel? Yeah, diesel is usually my kind of go-to good news part of the video. Not this time, guys. It's not bad, but it's not good either. The good news, we're going to start. This is the diesel truck stop actual price per gallon. I'm going to zoom in here. The good news is that the diesel prices are lower than they were last week. They're currently at $4.26 per gallon on average. The bad news, if you look closely, there is this uptick happening, which is not good. And if we look at this chart right here, which shows us the changes in diesel prices uh, over the past week, green means there was an increase red means there was a decrease we can see more green squares popping up meaning these green places they're experiencing an uptick in diesel prices arizona maryland nevada virginia minnesota south dakota texas oklahoma wisconsin minnesota i said new mexico arizona yeah basically i'm not very happy with this because higher diesel costs can make a huge difference in everyone's net income yep with those diesel prices ticking up i mean to be completely honest on one hand i am terrified because i know the damage this can cause to my companies to your companies diesel prices going up in such a down market when it comes to rates yeah it's definitely not good on the other hand though this might be the straw that finally breaks that camel's back and finally drives out capacity at a rapid pace. Now, in terms of my week, as I said before, I have been working solely with our flatbed. And there are a few reasons for this, but let me tell you about Murphy and his damned laws. Yeah, it has been a week that scared the bejesus out of me because one of my team members fell gravely ill while on a load. Thankfully, he's doing better now. Basically, we had to fly out one of my business partners to recover that load because the broker, I, I'm telling you, business is business. Of course, making money is making money, but common decency and humanity, I mean, guys, come on. When he fell gravely ill, I am not talking about a cold or the flu or something like that. I'm talking about something truly terrible, like emergency room, urgent care, terrible. And when you tell that to the broker and they tell you that, well, you have to get this load moving, it's not our problem, figure it out. Well, yeah, I have no words. I'm just grateful that my guy is doing better, that he is recovering and that we did end up figuring everything out. But honestly, we have to remember that those guys and gals who are sitting behind the wheel of a truck those are human beings. They are not robots. Humanity is lacking nowadays. Anyway, I went off on a tangent again. I am so sorry. I wish you a wonderful rest of your week, an amazing weekend, and I'll see you guys in the next video.